It does. No, it does. See even old dogs. That's true. I learned stuff all the time. Good thing I wasn't drinking. Ready? I am ready. Are you? All right. All right. You notice this axe and log sitting here. I'm going to explain that right away. The axe represents service, and I'll tell you why. The man who founded uh, scouting, Baden Powell, he was a big believer in the Knights of the Round Table, you know, Robin Hood, the days of chivalry and all that. Well, back then, you weren't allowed to carry an axe. Most people, we were just commoners, and we weren't allowed to carry an axe. And you had to earn the right to carry an axe because all the trees belonged to the king and to the lords of the land. You weren't allowed to cut down any of the trees. All you could do is go around and pick up wood that had already fallen. Now you could imagine how difficult that was back then because there was no electricity, there was no gas, there was none, none of that. The only thing you had to cook on or heat with was wood and you had to gather it from the floor of the forest. Imagine that if you couldn't carry an axe. Well, in order to have the right to carry an axe, you did special favors for the for the king or for the landowner or whatever, and you were able to do that. So this represents community service going way back, going back hundreds of years. And it's the totem for the wood badge course that I'm about to talk about. And sometimes it rolls right off the table. Sometimes it stays. And it's safe. <laughs> I now declare this court of honor uh, for the purpose of presenting the wood badge beads to Michael Getz. And let me tell you a little bit about wood badge. You guys might have heard of NYLT. Anybody here it's still Cub Scouts, you might not have heard of that. It's a training for Boy Scouts to tell them how to, how to be good leaders. It has all kinds of leader stuff in it. Well, the founder of scouting back in 1907 put on a course on Brown Sea Island for those Boy Scouts at the time. A couple years later, he realized he was going out in the woods with all these young men, but the adults had no clue what they were doing. And sometimes that's still the way it is, right? <laughs> yep. you know? So they need, you know, adults need training too. And he realized, uh, Baden Powell realized that he needed to put on the same leadership training for the adults. Well, he designed this course, but remember in 1907, he had, he had done it for the boys, and a couple years later, he decided to do it for the men. But any of you adults know what happened around that time of 1910, 1911, World started happening World in Europe. War. World War One started World. breaking out, right. And so the men couldn't go to any training. The men were off fighting. So he had to wait until 1919, until the war was over, before he could actually do this course. So the boys knew for more than 10 years what the adults had to find out later on. And I think we're still doing that, aren't we? <laughs> So that's that's that, that's why it all started. After he put on this training course and the adults learned how to do some of the leadership skills, he de he decided uh, he needed to have a good way to recognize the adults. It wasn't the same old stuff, not a patch, not not just a normal uh, kind of honor. So he came up with the wood badge beads and the way he and Chuck, you're going to present them. The way the way he came up with the beads is. Uh, Baden Powell was actually a general in the British Army and he served in South Africa and he discovered a wooden beaded uh, breastplate that, that one of the natives had been using and he thought it was really pretty. Well he took some of those beads off there and he actually honored each one of his men with one of the beads and he did that for a number of years and so it still is made the same style, the bead is made uh, carved the same way as the original beads that were on that breastplate that Baden Powell gave to those guys. So uh, Mr. Getz has earned his wood badge beads and Mr. Hale's going to place them on it around his neck. Okay, you need to remove the neck you. Turn that collar on. Put a new one on. Good. You go ahead and... Uh, The next thing that, that we need to present Mr. Guest with is the neckerchief. Uh, this little patch down at the bottom is significant because the man who donated the land 
where the very first course was taken was William Du Bois McLaren, and that is the tartan that he wore. You've seen uh, the Scottishman wearing kilts. Well, that's what he wore. That was his kilt. And he was the commissioner for Scotland at the time, and he donated the land. And that land still belongs to Scouts. And if any of you guys ever get to London, England, it's just outside of London, England. It's in Epping Forest. It's real near London. And it's they still do trainings, and the Scouts still uh, gather there from all around the world. <laughs> you can roll it however, however you want. Shows how it's done, Mr. Hill. Uh, I'll do the way I'm doing <clears throat> On Eagle Courts of Honor, I'd love to give it to a mom or dad that's never been around scouting much because <laughs> it takes a while to roll up an neckerchief. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me and ironing. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> and the last thing we're, the next thing we're going to present Mr. Getz with is the, the woggle that brings it all together. This is made from a Turk's head, head knot. It's a two strand Turk's head knot. And if you'll notice, Mr. Getz, it's a continuous strand all the way through and it goes right back and just continues to loop around. And what that represents is, scouting is, is a journey that doesn't really end. He, although Mr. Getz finished his ticket, he's still involved in scouting, and it still continues on. So it, we hope that it just continues on for Mr. Getz. thing we're going to present him with is his certificate. Now the, the original certificate was a, a little more ornate. Um, one of the things that if you ever uh, read up on Baden Powell, he was an artist. He wasn't just a general, he was a pretty, pretty creative man. One of the great stories I love to tell about Baden Powell was uh, he, he was captured once in the Dalmatian Islands, which is right outside of Greece. The Austrian army had invaded the islands and the British wanted to see just what they were up to. So they sent him and he was not a very big man. He was maybe about the size of Mr. Hale there. And uh, <laughs> he was probably not was too far off? different in age as well. <laughs> now imagine Mr. Hale with, with his uh, artist uh, canvas and he's painting butterflies. He had paintings after paintings of butterflies. Yeah. And when the Austrian army came and they, they captured him, you know, he's British, so they captured him, they asked him, what on earth are you doing? And they, they looked at all the, and he said, he's just an artist out here, crazy British artist painting butterflies. Well, when you looked at the painting, the veins in the, in the butterfly's wings were all the roads on the island. Uh -huh. All the dots on the wings, they were where the buildings were, where the munitions were kept. It was actually a map of the islands, and it told them everything they needed to know, and they just waved them off and said, Mr. Hale, go on your way. We're not worried about you, because you're just a crazy little artist. And that's that's exactly what happened. Well, the original certificate, Baden-Powell had him put a line from a poem that Rudyard Kipling had written. <clears throat> Do any of you guys know who Rudyard Kipling was, by any chance? He's the one who wrote The Jungle Book. Anybody ever hear of Akela? <laughs> Anybody here ever hear of Baloo? Yeah, that, that's all part of uh, Rudyard Kipling's story, uh, A Jungle Book. Well, he was a good friend of Baden Powell's. So he wrote, a, he wrote a poem about Boy Scouts, and just part of it was put on that certi certificate, the original certificate. And I'm going to read those lines to you. I don't usually like to read you know, from a paper, but this is too good. I like to read it. Who has smelled wood smoke at twilight? Who has heard the birch bark burning? Who is quick to read the noises of the night? Let them follow with the others, for the young men's feet are turning to the camps of proved desire and known delight. And since the certificate's too filled up nowadays, they don't have it on there anymore. So Mr. Getz, I typed it on the back of that certificate. So if you ever take it out of the frame, you've got a nice little gem on the inside there from, from Rudyard Kipling given to Baden Powell. Thank you. Let's congratulate Good. Mr. Hill. 
Now, just real quickly, you guys are getting a little chilly. Um, this training he did was more than just going to classes. After he was done, there were some significant things he promised he would do. That was called a ticket. And the way that gets its name was Baden Powell, and when he was in the military back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, if you were in the British military, they didn't give you a free ticket home. You had to find your own way home from wherever you, you were when you stopped being in the military. So what the smart soldiers would do is they would apply for duty nearer home as they got closer to the end of their service. So if you were in India, you might move to, say, Saudi Arabia, you might move to Egypt, you might move to Italy, and you'll eventually be home. And so we like to call it working your ticket when you have these things you promise to do for service. And Mr. Getz did some really nice service um, as part of his ticket, and he worked his way home, and now there he is. And now I'm going to declare this court of honor officially closed. Thank you. Yeah. Now normally we sing a song at, at the end, but there aren't enough of us that know the song. So we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you that. And your critter was a bear, right? Yes. He's always going to be a bear to us. A black bear okay. or a brown black bear? Yeah. Bear yeah. A grizzly bear. bear. <laughs> wow, we saw purple one last night. Yeah, the bear, bear on the bear patch bear. was very angry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Kenny. Oh.